So I'm going to talk for a few minutes about uh, imaging of the knee, and uh, um, we'll go over just the most common uh, techniques we use nowadays. Plain film by far the most common techniques, just a regular x-ray and knee. Um, CT scanning and MRI we'll go over briefly as well. Um, ultrasound, which is a, um, a really growing area, musculoskeletal ultrasound is probably the hottest topic in most of radiology now. Um, both doesn't lend itself to the knee tremendously well and also doesn't lend itself to a 10 minute talk. It is really, the imaging is not intuitive and uh, um, you're better off having that as more dedicated study. We do not do many uh, bone scans for knee issues, so we'll, we'll stick with the ones you see here. Most people, they go to the doctor and they complain of knee pain, whether they're in the emergency room or they're at one of the orthopedics office. We'll, we'll get x-rays, and they're a very good screening tool for what uh, you can see on uh, internal in people. What jumps off the screen is people's bones, right? You can see people's femur, tibia, fibula, and patella. Uh, but there's a lot of other structures here that are very useful to look at that uh, you can see even on these imaging here. You have your quadriceps tendon, which attaches to the top of the patella. Patella ligament can be seen. And the relationship with the patella to the remaining structures, which Dr. Delos went over earlier, uh, is very useful to see. Um, people often, when they come into the orthopedist, the emergency room have effusions. They have fluid on the knee. The knee is a weight-bearing structure, so it usually doesn't collect in, in spaces that, that have weight. It usually collects in spaces where it doesn't have weight. So it usually collects in some areas where people can see and you can tell if people have a, a reasonable effusion. And finally, the spaces that don't have any bone are just as important to look at the ones that do. This is all the cartilage that this patient has, and it's a very important space to see. Uh, it's a very good overview of how much cartilage you really have in your, in your uh, knee. And because of that, they often do a separate view, a tunnel view, which looks at the cartilage in a different part of the knee. And finally, often there's a, uh, uh, a view of the patella itself sitting on top of the femur. And again, Dr. Delos, Delos went over the uh, uh, patella tracking issues. It's a very good uh, screening test to see uh, the relationship of those two structures. The two major reasons people uh, have these uh, x-rays done is for arthritis. This patient uh, has osteoarthritis, not osteoporosis, and has lost their cartilage in the medial part of the knee. And the x-ray is a very good test for seeing that. Um, the person has osteophytes, some other bony changes, a little wider stuff, sclerosis below the end plate. But there's things you can see that, that are clearly what's going on with the patient's uh, problems. You don't need a lot of other imaging testing for this. You can also see that the soft tissues of the patient on the outside, maybe not as well with the lighting up here, um, is big enough so they're probably in the high 200 pound range. And it's a, it's a correlates very well with how much uh, weight bearing you put in your cartilage and how much wear and tear you get. And the other reason, the other second other reason besides arthritis is trauma. So people come to the emergency room and they have trauma, they go to the orthopedist after that trauma. You know, fractures are very common. I'm not sure how well it displays here, but there's a patella fracture and uh, uh, those are the real main reasons we do uh, uh, x-rays. CAT scanning is, is also an x-ray procedure. And every time we talk about CAT scanning, we talk about um, exposure. CAT scanning is uh, much more exposure to the patient than, than a regular x-ray is. There is a little advantage in musculoskeletal CAT scan. There's a lot of intrinsic contrast between the bone and the soft tissue next to it. Uh, and that helps. We don't have to use nearly as many CAT scans to do CAT scans of people's extremities than we do. It's much harder to see your liver next to your gallbladder. The densities are not very different. It's much, much easier to see the difference between your femur and your soft tissues, and therefore we don't need to have as many uh, x-rays performed. But this is a typical picture. There's a slice through the kneecap, the patella, and what the system does is it takes this whole slab of data, and we can then display it any way we want. And the real revolution in, in cross-sectional imaging, CT, MRI, and, and ultrasound, is being able to see those small slices of the uh, parts of the body that without overlapping structures. It really lets you see inside to what you want to see. And that's what the uh, utility of a lot of these uh, techniques have been. So here, the technologist on top of the data plots a bunch of scans that will show sagittal pictures and coronal pictures, and they'll have no overlapping structures. It really is very uh, useful technique. So if someone comes into the emergency room with a fracture, uh, fractures are very well assessed on, on CAT scan. It's one of the most common things we do. Um, one of the things that's very helpful about it as well 
besides the back, you can measure exactly how far things have been pushed around, how many pieces of the fracture they are, whether they're next to nerves or other muscle cell systems, is that this CAT scan takes two seconds to do. So the person's knee hurts, they're on a trauma board, they're, you know, it's not easy to get them on and off the table. But the actual procedure takes two seconds. And it gives a very clear picture of what's going on. And it's one of the big differences that you have for CAT scan than you do over MRI. The bones break and then bones have to heal. So one of the other reasons to see CAT scan, because it sees bony anatomy so well, is that um, when fractures are stabilized, not all fractures heal for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but non-union of fracture is a, is a uh, big decision to make whether you're going to continue treating the person for a fracture that may heal or, or is not going to heal. This patient had a fracture of the patella, screws were placed across it, and the fracture never healed. There was never any bony union across that. There are reasons for that I won't go into, but uh, these, the bony anatomy is really extremely well displayed when you, you do CAT scanning. MRI is a different story. MRI, uh, you need three things to perform a, a good MRI. You need the right equipment, you need the right technical staff, and you need time. It takes about 30 minutes, give or take, to perform a very good MRI. The patients often have some pain in the place you're trying to image. And you need a technical staff who can both perform the test and comfort the patient and get them through things on a, in a place that uh, um, has the right equipment for it. And I'm very lucky here in Greenwich. I think both the Greenwich Hospital and ONS, we really have excellent technical staff, great equipment, and we spend the time to get uh, the images of what we need to see. But similar to CAT scan, you get small slices of the part of the body you're looking at. So you can see in MRI, it's much different now. You can still see the femur, the patella, the tibia. You can still see the bony structures. But now you really get a much enhanced view of the soft tissue structures. This is the person's ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, PCL. And with different pictures, you can see their MCL, attaching all the way down the inferior part of the uh, tibia, and a lateral collateral ligament as well. And you really can see all the soft tissue structures uh, of the knee. You can see the cartilage on the end of the bone, the place that was just a space on the, on the x-ray. And you can also see the menisci, the fibrous cartilage, that are positioned between the bones as well. They look very different from each other, and diseases and disorders of them are much, much easier to see. The menisci can be seen in this direction as well, and they, they lead to one of the most common reasons to do uh, MRIs. But the first one I'll leave you with, I, I wanted to go over uh, a number of uh, different examples of things, so I simply went through last year's ski season. So I went from January to March and did the hospital and done uh, SMRIs. It's like, the, it's like the knee's greatest hits. Um, so uh, this patient uh, has a full thing this tear, the uh, ACL. The ACL we saw before used to look black and across. This patient has a couple of fibers here and a couple of fibers there and has blood and, and other things in between and has a full thing this tear of their anterior crucial ligament. This patient here has an MCL tear. The medial collateral ligament comes down on the medial side and sort of stops and becomes grayer and there's fluid around it and never quite gets back to where it's supposed to go. But the, one of the most common reasons we do it is for meniscal tears. Uh, there's many people in this room, uh, my guess is uh, at least a number of you had uh, meniscal surgery. Um, the MRI is really the best test for this type of diagnosis. This meniscus is supposed to look like the other side. Now it has a white line across it, and you can see it in a different direction, a, a tear through the medial meniscus. This is the lateral meniscus. And the arthroscopist can go into the knee, right? And look, and they can see this part of the tear. The tear that we have to see has to go to the surface area of the meniscus for them to see it. And they can either resect some tears or repair tears. And it's really this technology that lets them know ahead of time what they, can, uh, what they think they're going to get into. And I'll leave you this case. This is the last one I'll show. This is a patient who has a big focus of cartilage loss on their medial femoral condyle. This person's x-ray would be normal. Right, the cartilage next to it on each side is keeping the space across from the, uh, the knee, and there would be no finding on their x-ray. And that's what's really been exciting about the technology we've had lately. Um, as the imaging has gotten better and been able to see more and more stuff, the orthopedic work you've been able to do has been able to be planned ahead of time and has been able to be challenged to do to treat the things that they see. Cartilage 
surgery now is a very, very common event. And they can tell ahead of time what they're going to get into, how much cartilage loss is going to be, what the success rates will likely be. And we can follow people after they've had it done to see how things are going without having to go back into the knee. So the imaging advances has, been, has I think, been really gone hand in hand with the technical advances of fixing everything. And it's really been a very exciting part of, uh, of medicine in the last uh, uh, half a century. Thank you.